Praise the Lord. Welcome to another Bible study here at Friendship Mission Church for the Homeless and the Poor here in Montgomery, Alabama. Pastor and founder, Vince Rosado. My name is Minister Warren Rudd. I'm a licensed minister by my bishop, Jimmy A. Ellis III, out of Victory Christian Center of Philadelphia in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Tonight's lesson is going to be on the Jesus who offends. The word offense is the Greek word scandalon meaning a stumbling block or a trap or a snare that we as saints sometimes put our foot in. But tonight's word is going to be so powerful, so I want you to sit back, get your Bible, get your paper and your pen, and get ready for a mighty word from God. As I always say, there you go, right there. Mm -hmm. God bless. God bless. Matthew 11, starting at verse 1. And it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his twelve, disciples, he departed this to teach and to preach in their cities. Now, when John, meaning John the Baptist, had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent to of his disciples, and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Now that's funny. He's asking, is it you? Now, just before that, he baptized you. He saw the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove fall upon you. The Holy Ghost spoke to him and said, this is the Son of God who I'm well pleased. But now John is locked up in prison and asking Jesus, are you the one? He said, behold, we go the Lamb of God. He announced on him. Right? Look at verse 4. Jesus answered and said unto them, go and show John again. Show John again those things which we do, which you do here and see. The blind receive their sight and the lame walk. The leopards are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Amen. Amen. Verse 6. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Blessed is he whosoever not be offended in me. My word tonight to you is going to be the Jesus who offends. Amen. Amen. The Jesus who is friends. Let us pray. Let us pray to sin. Father, we just thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for the word that's already come forth. I cast out this flu and this cold. Even I, I'm being uh, attacked by it, Father. So uh, let your man's word walk on the way of the word. Let me decrease it that you may increase. And let everybody be instructed and guided and built up and established in your word. I ask these things in Jesus' name. And let the house say amen. amen. So we're looking at John the Baptist, God of why did John the Baptist get offended? Remember something. John the Baptist, it took him 30 years to walk into his ministry. You know, some people think they're going to walk into their ministry in a day or after a year. They're all built up. But God it took God 30 years to build his ministry. And then when he came out talking about repent, repent, be ye baptized, guess how long his ministry lasted before he got in prison and then his head got chopped off and he showed up on the scene. His ministry only lasted six months. That's right. But we got Baptist churches and all that. You know he only said, repent, repent. For six months, Jesus showed up. He got locked up and his head got chopped off. And then his people spoke. So all you see all these people lasting 30 years or 40 years. How much you going to talk about John? Six months he preached before it was over. Amen? Then he got offended. How I many of you offended at Jesus? reason why I'm bringing this message is because Jesus will offend you. And the reason why I'm saying that he offends you is because... A lot of people want to know Jesus. They want to claim Jesus. But as soon as Jesus tells you, you got to change your life. As soon as Jesus tells you, you got to stop getting high. You got to stop fornicating. You got to stop stealing. You got to stop lying. You get offended and quit. You don't want him no more because he says you got to change your life to believe in me. Amen. That's the that's the offense that Jesus brings to you. He said you can't claim me and don't want to change. Amen. I don't think this is going to be too popular. Yes, I'm right. I ain't worried about it being too popular. Amen. Go to Luke chapter 17. We're going to see it in Scripture. For those of you who want to take notes, I'm trying to take these notes. Because we always talk about a glorious Jesus. We already talk about it. We want to preach the good news of the gospel. Well, here's some real good news. He offends you to tell you to get your life right. So you get offended because you don't want to walk with Jesus. You want your flesh, but you don't want to follow his spirit. Amen. 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 Luke. Luke 17. I'm jumping ahead of myself. One verse. Luke 17. Looking at verse 1. Luke 17, 1. Then said he unto his disciples, It is possible 
but that offenses will come. They're going to come. Offenses will come, but woe, judgment unto him through whom they come. Verse 2. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and he cast into the sea, than that he should offend one of these little ones. One of the little ones, newborn saints. Right. Every time you offend one of God's little ones, he said it would be better for you to have a little stone cast about your neck than you throw it into the sea. You know, we take that as being little kids and all that. That is true. But that's somebody who just came into the Lord. As soon as you come to the Lord, no matter who you are, you are a baby. You don't understand spiritual things. So somebody come along and offend you, Jesus said, my judgment on you is going to be greater. Amen. Because you tell that person they can still act the same. They can still live the same. You tell that person, no man, I received the Lord, but you want to tempt them with getting high. You want to tempt them with drinking. You want to tempt them with fornication. You have just offended Jesus' little one. Hello. Hello. Let me tell you what the Greek word for offense means. The Greek word for offense is called scandal. It's spelled S-K-A-N-D-A-L-O-N. The Greek word scandalon. Now watch this. I'm going to tell you what it means. A scandalon is this. How many used to watch the cartoons they had that big jaw trap with the teeth on it? Yeah. And as soon as the animal stepped in, it would happen to the jaw. It closes. The little thing in the center, the trigger that you step on to make the jaws close, that's called a scandalon. And it triggers the trap. So the Greek word for scandalon, it also means snare, stumbling block. What else have I got here? Or a trap. Any impediment placed in the way of causing one to stumble or fall. A stumbling block. Occasion of stumbling. See, what's an occasion of stumbling? Come on, brother. You can get away with it today. I'm causing you to occasionally stumble. I'm causing you to scandal. So when you see the word offense, it's scandal. I want to trap you to stand into falling. Oh, Lord. Amen. That is a rock which is a cause of stumbling any person or thing by which one is entrapped, drawn into an error, or drawn into sin. Amen. It is, it is offense or stumbling block that gets in the way of believers to keep them from progressing in God. This doesn't mean they will lose their salvation, but many Christians are hindered from doing the work of God. Why? Because they have been entrapped. They have been snared. They don't want to go on for God like they used to. Amen. Amen. Like somebody who has been hurt or had a bad marriage, they will say, like, I'll never get married again. Or I'll never trust a man again. I'll never trust a woman again. Now, they were on their way progressing in love, but because they got offended by whoever the love object was, it caused them to slow down in their progress with God. And many people do not go further or go with them further themselves with God because they have gotten offended. You know, you let someone hurt you. You let a family member hurt you. You let a friend hurt you. And they stop. Man, I don't believe you say it. You talk that Jesus stuff. I saw you last. Then they start to make you believe, even the devil will make you believe, well, if I'm still sinning, the God ain't ready for me. I gotta stop doing everything before I come to Jesus. No! That person has just been sent to offend you, cause a trap in your life, and you just stepped on the scandal line and the teeth got you. One thing I can say about animals when they get trapped on that, some animals bite, they lay clean the wall. Just so that trap will hold it. Amen. You ain't gonna go for in a minute. Amen. What do you want to do? Stay in the trap? Amen. All right. Offenses come from two sources. The one we are used to, they come from a source, the one we're used to, you know, that we always get offended by, right? And the one we are not used to. The one we are used to is our flesh. Our flesh offends us all the time. I know it didn't mean. I always say this, you wouldn't sin unless it feels good. Right. Sin, you don't sin that it feels bad, you sin because it feels good. Then, conviction would hit me, oh my God, why did I do that? And usually that happened because all the money ran out by that time. But why I had more money to keep sinning, I wasn't offended. Amen. But your flesh will offend you. Offenses come from the flesh. 
The one we are not used to is Jesus. Jesus offends whether you like it or not. Whether you believe it or not, Jesus offends. Amen. Somebody, well, he loves me. He forgives me. Well, when he tells you you need to live right, then he lets you live. He heals you and you go right back out and sit again. Why? Because you got offended. You don't believe he did it. Then you get sick again. Well, I thought Jesus healed me. No, you got offended. He did. But if you want to keep running to the offense, you got snared. You found a stumbling block, and you got right back in the track. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Go to Matthew chapter 18. Matthew 18. You want to look at this. I want to thank y'all for your obedience tonight. Uh, it ain't about me. I, it really bothers me, despite, I know a lot of unsaved people come here, but I love everybody that come from here. But you need to start recognizing, after y'all eat, this turns into a sanctuary. Amen. This, is not a, uh, this is not a debate room, this is not a, a you know, challenge the preacher room, or whatever. The moment the preacher comes up here, it is a sanctuary. Amen. 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 Don't matter that we got those little idols and all these little things that look like the churches you're going to. Amen. You're the church! Yes. Show God some respect. Amen. That's all I'm saying. But to have conversations going on and talking, I'm telling you, I've looking at the videos, I hear some of y'all cussing while I'm preaching. Mm -hmm. Man. Wow. It's amazing to me. Y'all don't think that little microphone on that thing picks you up? I'm telling you. You know, if you can pick me up from here, what's he picking up from there? All right. Amen. 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 Let me know who it is. Matthew 18, look at verse 15. 1815, very famous scripture. Now, I'm going to make that verse 7, I'm sorry. 1817. 1817. 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, needs be that offenses come. That word needs be means it is necessary yeah. that these offenses come into your life. You ain't going to mature without them. Yeah, Jesus said it must needs be or it is necessary that these offenses come. But woe unto the man by whom the offenses come. Verse 8. Wherefore if thy hand or if your hand or your foot offend you. Watch them all. So his word offends. The gospel. 
gospel offends. Jesus offends. Because he tells you, you got to live right. And you don't want to do it. Amen. So you get snared. You get trapped. Amen. And you'd rather go to hell than to hear the preacher say, you need to get saved. Yeah. Amen. Go to Matthew 5, look at verse 27. <laughs> Matthew 5, verse 27. You have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever look, whosoever look on a woman to lust after her, he has committed adultery with her already in his heart. Now they ain't saying you can't look. Oh, she look good. But the moment you gentlemen look or ladies look at a person and undress them in your mind and do that act in your mind, Jesus said you have done it. Hello. God said, I ain't got no problem you looking at my beauty that I created, but the moment you lust for it, make it in your mind to do it, you have done it. Amen. I think I cleared that up. Verse 29. And if thy right eye, watch this, and if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out. For it is profitable for you that one of your members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Let's keep reading. Keep reading. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Amen. Amen. Look at verse 29. When he says, and if thy right eye, the right eye represents your mind. That's a representation of your mind. That's an even for your mind. Why is that so? So if your thoughts in your mind is causing you to stumble or be ensnared or get offended and stop your progression in God, then pluck it out. Your thoughts, if not governed by the Spirit, can offend your walk with God. Amen. Many Christians cannot walk with God to the degree that they can because they won't take authority over their mind. Amen. That thought can come, but you don't have to act on it. Because that's all you got to do is set it up. You say, oh, that's no good. I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. But if you grab that thing and take authority, you ain't got to do it. You ain't got to do it. Look at verse 30. And if that right hand offend thee. Now, the right hand is a representation of the... What is this? The activity. Because your hands cause you to do things. You can't do no sin unless you got a hand. You got to pick it up, you got to drop it, and you got to light it. Hello. I thought I'd read that. You got to pick it up, you got to crack it, and you got to drink it. Oh, I thought I'd go there. Amen. Amen. So, the right eye is a representation of your mind, and the right hand is a representation of the activity that you are willing to do. Amen? Mm -hmm. Go to Matthew 18 again. Now we're going to go to 15. <laughs> Matthew 18, 15. Y'all get anything out of this already? Yeah. I know I'm having a slow start, but God, God got it all. Amen? All right. I'm not going to try and stop and tell stories. I just want to get through this word. And those of you who are taking notes, I hope it blesses you. Amen? Amen. Because uh, it sure enough blessed me. So, Matthew 18, 15. Then it says, Moreover, if thou shalt trespass against thee, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, that word trespass means if your brother sins against you. Mm -hmm. Now, the word thee, as soon as you see the word thee, what do you see behind? No, no you see a comma. Oh, yes. That comma means check your love level. Mm -hmm. Check yourself. Examine yourself before you go farther. All right. Pause. Look at your own attitude, yes. whether you're offended or not, yes. you go to that man or woman. Come on now. Check yourself. But Jesus, he's about self-examination. Amen? Amen? So he said, if, moreover, if thy brother shall trespass or sins against you, check it. Then go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. All right. Don't take your friend. Don't take somebody who agree with you. That's right. Humbly, soft answer turns away wrath. Amen. Amen. Then, if he shall
shall hear you, thou shalt do what? Gain your brother. Now, why did I bring that out? It's one thing when your brother sins or offends you, but are you going to do when Jesus offends you? What are you going to do when Jesus offends you? It's one thing when your brother offends you, but what are you going to do when Jesus offends you? This is why many people do not come to Christ. It's because our message offends people. A lot of you don't come to Jesus because you're offended at Rosario. You're offended at me. We're only messengers. That's right. We're only delivering what the Word of God says. You be offended at me all day. But you're not really offended at me. You're offended at this. You're offended at Jesus. Amen. 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 If the preacher, if you excuse me, if you preach holiness or hell, it will offend people. Ain't that my example earlier? Every time I heard him say, you're going to hell, I got offended. So if you start telling people, you got to live right, you ain't getting in unless you stop that mess you're going. Or you have a heart to stop. There are some things we can't stop overnight, but you got to have a heart to walk to stop. God knows it's a struggle in your flesh, but he also knows your desires of the heart is true. We may not know, but he knows. Amen. So, if you preach holiness or hell, it will offend people. The gospel that is preached today is too sugar-coated. The gospel today is too sugar-coated. If I tell you, brother, give me $10, God will give you 100 you'll be running up here. Brother, if you sow a 1000 at my feet, tomorrow morning God will give you a house. You'll believe that? As a matter of fact, you go out to the club and get drunk over it. Man, in the morning, I'm going to have a sin. You don't hear a lot of churches telling you you need to get your life right. You don't hear a lot of churches telling you you're wrong for this, you're wrong for that. Amen. Amen. But they want to let you know, come on then, Jesus is going to bless you. I'm going to give you this and give you that. Jesus said, I ain't giving you nothing unless you obey me and live right. Amen. Hello. I'm sorry. You need to turn off TV and all those sweet coated programs and read your Bible for yourself. And watch him offend you. Or get your life straight. Amen? Amen. 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 Go to Isaiah 8. Go to Isaiah 8. It's all right, Isaiah chapter 8. So sugarcoated Jesus, I never like. I love my grateful Jesus. I love the Jesus that with my tail. You know what I mean? That's the only reason why I got my life right. And I still make mistakes. I still got a lot of mistakes in my life. And I'm not excusing it to say that, you know, what I used to do, I ain't doing today. No, I'm still a work in progress. Amen. You know, and I thank God for his love for me. Because he knows my heart. Amen? Amen. Because he knows I ain't going to be no phony. I ain't going to be a phony in front of you. I ain't going to be no phony in front of God. Amen. 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 Look at uh, chapter 8, verse 13 to 15 in Isaiah. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread, and he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling, there's the offense, but for a stone of stumbling, and for a rock of what? Offense, to both the house of Israel, and for the jinn, and for the snare, to inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble, and fall. And be broken and be snared and be taken. Amen. Because they are offended. Are y'all offended at Jesus? Amen. We're going to find out before this message is Go to Isaiah 17. Isaiah 17, looking at verse 10 and 11. Because thou hast forgotten the God of your salvation and has not been mindful of the rock of your strength. Therefore shall thou plant pleasant plants and shall set it with a strange slips. Now that strange slips means you're going to start going out to a farm. People who have no relationship with you. Unsaved. 